Matthew is the co-founder and managing director of digital marketing firm China Channel. So Matthew, let's start with your experience in the video that you posted about facial recognition in China and why even as a technology expert, it stood out to you. Yeah, I, I put it out on, on Twitter there. It became incredibly popular, uh, this short video just displaying uh, a use case of how the technology is applied within the environment of an international airport. Uh, I think it really struck a nerve. Uh, people, you know, th this technology is quite new to most people, and I think we're really uh, grappling with some of the sort of themes around privacy uh, and how this new technology will come into our lives in different ways. And so this was just a different use case, I think, that really um, struck a chord with a lot of people. And uh, a lot of the sentiment around it, to be honest, was, was quite negative. Uh, people are worried about the application of this technology. Uh, and I think there needs to be more dialogue around it. Now, obviously, it's something that's more familiar in a lot of major cities in China, and as you mentioned, not so in other parts of the world. So where are we mostly seeing the application of facial recognition in China? Oh, it's cropping up everywhere. Uh, if you look for it, you're going to see the signs. So uh, beyond airports, you're going to see that it's quite common now in office buildings. Uh, when you go into the office building, go out um, into, into different uh, areas around, around the country. I'm thinking of examples in Shenzhen, uh, here in Shanghai, that's quite common. Uh, you're going to see it in convenience stores uh, for payments. Uh, I was in 7-Eleven store just the other week and saw they've installed a new system there. Um, you can see it in classrooms, in education, uh, also cropping up as well. So the different scenarios and applications of facial recognition technology are, are so many. Um, I'm just thinking even the other day for banking uh, in, at the ATM at my, at my local bank, China Construction Bank, now they also have facial recognition built into the ATMs. So it's really cropping up in all different kinds of scenarios. Now you mentioned this example of classrooms and, and there was a little bit of backlash because a lot of people either didn't know, the students didn't know that they were being recorded. And then there's also this issue of consent. So how much discussion is there at not just the government but the private level also about mm. consent and privacy? Well, consent and privacy is definitely a big issue. I think it really depends on the scenario um, and how it's presented. Making people aware that this is going on is very important. But we're, we're just dealing with so many different scenarios here that it really depends on, on the specifics of the application. So for education, I think you know, as long as the students are aware um, of the usage of the system, as long as the data is being stored and protected uh, in appropriate ways, uh, I think it probably could be used and, in, in very useful uh, ways, um, but we do need to be careful at the same time. And we actually saw that Amazon recently came under fire from a lot of AI experts who found that the company's technology is less accurate in recognizing women and people of color, and so Amazon should stop offering their services to law enforcement until these regulations can catch up. What are your thoughts on not just accuracy, but the pace of regulations with this technology? Yeah, so definitely accuracy is, is something that people like to talk about. Uh, for sure, these systems, you know, the, the classic example is twins, right? If you have twins, uh, that they, uh, they can fool the system usually. Um, but also a lot of the uh, data sets that these companies are using to train the recognition here in China, of course, the data they have is very heavily weighted towards ethnically Han people and, and, and people within China. And so it would be less accurate uh, they just simply don't have the, the data for, for a more global um, array of people. But um, the systems generally, the technology, you know, we see this in so many different areas. You know, the technology today where it is, um, it's constantly being iterated. It's constantly being improved. Um, it's already at a fairly decent level. But of course, there are situations where it, you know, it will fail. Um, but over time, you're going to see that it's constantly iterated and improved. So I wouldn't expect this kind of issue to be too much of a problem in the long run. All right, thank you so much. Matthew Brennan there, Managing Director at China Channel.